misunderstanding about what they were doing. They were developing a religio-politico-economic uh, system that would eventually uh, take over the entire Western world and would hope for one day take over the entire earth in a new order of the world. The so new, the new world order, looking, basically. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's exactly right. And it's the Christian Church, which is, which has promoted it, uh, and they don't even realize it. No, no, I'm not talking about the Christian people in the church. I'm talking about the actual heads of the corporations, the actual home office of the different churches. The Christian people have no idea in the world what's going on. I'm talking about the officials and the, the heads of all of these Protestant and Christian churches, they know what's really going on. They know who they are. I had an FBI agent in San Diego call me one time, and I think I may have said this to you before. Mm. I had an FBI agent call me a few years back, and uh, he, he called and said, this was a social call, it's not business. And he said, I just want to let you know that you're being listened to and watched by your government. And he said, but your government does not consider you to be a, uh, a, a threat right now because we, we understand that people are hearing you. We don't care if people hear you. What we're concerned with is that people listen to you. If they begin to actually listen to you rather than just hearing you like they hear anybody else, right. then, then you might be in uh, a more trouble. And he said, but right now your government does not consider you to be a threat. But, he said, however, if ever you're going to have any real trouble in this world, it's going to come from the church, not government. Hmm. Government doesn't care what you're talking about, but the church is very, very bad. And he says, the church today, the Christian church today, this is an FBI man telling me this is from San Diego. He said, the church today is a criminal operation. It's a criminal syndicate. They are lying to the people. They're manipulating them in politics. The, and so any organization, any kind of an, uh, of an organizational arrangement uh, or an institution that can hold the people's uh, voting power, they, they can control the people's spending, they can control the people's minds, you've got to know that's, that's, that's very, very bad stuff. So he says, so just be aware that you are being watched by the church. Mm. And if you begin to uh, make too much of a, of a headway against them, they will deal with you. Now, so uh, I know, you know uh, I understand. I just want to say as well, uh, I mean, now in many uh, European countries, at least, um, this is a, a news item a while back, actually, they mentioned that uh, even the Christianity that they once held is considered to be dead. You know, they mentioned, I think it was like Switzerland and Norway, and there was a few other countries as well, where it's like, even the churches now are, are empty in that sense. And the question there, of course, is the, this is part of, you know, as I feel, a bit of the illusion as well. I can feel it too in this country, in Sweden, where people are like laughing when you say that the church holds any power anymore. It's like, are you kidding? It's it's dead. It's over. It's falling apart. It doesn't hold any, you know, uh, uh, assets or it's not wealth anymore, which is not true, of course. No, it's not true at all. It's, it's, but it's like anything else. In America, so much of America's big industry is mafia. It's underworld. But it's, uh, you know, like the, the movie Godfather, when uh, Michael, in the, in the first movie of Godfather, when Michael tells his girlfriend, he keeps telling her, he says, Kate, in five years, the, the family is going to be completely legit. The idea being is that the underworld in America and around, the, and even in Europe, uh, they were making so much money that they began to inv invest in corporations, invest their money in, in the big corporation, General Motors, Ford mm. Motor Company, United, U.S. Steel, and, and with hundreds of billions of dollars uh, you know, from organized crime being pumped into these big corporations. Well, today, the big uh, underworld families, the, uh, uh, in the shadow world, uh, is uh, big stockholders in all the major corporations, so that the major corporations are actually being run by criminals. Yep. But they're the only ones that got the money, <laughs> and so uh, and so that's what I'm saying. You've got to understand that the church is a corporation, and it's incorporated under the government, and the government's un incorporated under the church, 
and the churches, it you know, goes all the way back to, like I said, to, like you said, Constantine, and the whole apparatus we call the religious, political, economic system of the Western world is now falling apart. Why? Why? It's because it's based on some very dark and evil stuff, and that's why I try and do what I do. How do you think, though, that they manage to keep it alive, keep the agenda alive, keeping people coming to these organizations and continuing to, uh, you know, from our perspective, it, it, you know, it seems that it's a, goes on a pretty straight line. It's pretty steady from from my perspective, anyway. And I'm not saying that within the the, the factions or within the church or within the, these families that there is strife and there's infighting going in on going on. And from their perspective, things might be much more difficult. But in any regard, the overarching picture that I get is that it's it's still kind of progressing forward their way uh, in any regard. How, how do they oh, yeah. manage that, do you think? I mean, are, are we talking oh. about uh, people who can live for a long, long, long time here? Or, or is it just the ideology, the, the philosophy of this thing? Well, I think, look, and I told you, I, I think I mentioned one time before that people will always support what they want to hear. I mean, uh, you know, if you love country music, you're not going to pay $50 to go to a rap concert. If you love and if you love opera, you're not going to pay uh, you know fifty bucks to go to a rock and roll concert. Right. People people will pay money to hear what they want to hear, and they will pay money to eat what they wish to eat, not go to a restaurant that they don't like. And so people will financially and in every other way support what they want to hear. Well, the corporations, the big corporations, do something we call commercials, and they tell you wonderful things that you want to hear. It's just business, just to make money. Well, that's how the churches are able to continue to keep going, and especially in America, because uh, because it does not require any uh, critical thinking or any wisdom and research and study. They me- they merely tell the people what they want to hear, and the people love it. People, I, I have found that if you can if you can tell uh, an audience. Uh, or if you can, how would I say this? If you can go before an audience and show them that what they believe to be true is true and prove it to them that what they believe to be true is the real truth, they will love you. They'll support you, give you money, and they will they will promote you and feed you all over the world uh, because you are telling them that what they already believe to be true is true. That's what they want to hear. Mm. What they don't want to hear is that they that they are full of bull and they are, and they're being lied to. People right. don't want to hear that. Yeah. They're, they're not going to give you money to hear that. They're not going to come down and sit down and pay money for you to show them meticulous and methodically how they have been lied to. I've found that out. People are not interested to come in and lecture us to hear the real truth. They come to. They want to be entertained. That's why we have wrestling matches in Hollywood and entertainment. People pay big money to be entertained. They don't. They're not giving you a dime to tell them the truth. So I mean, I've always known that my my work is uh, is appealing to only a niche audience, a small yeah. Yeah. select audience. So so in a way, uh, overall collectively, I guess humanity, we we brought it on ourselves, and we've we've uh, we allowed. To be, you know, made into slaves, and and we have allowed allowed the the knowledge that humanity, I believe, once held, to be taken away from us. That's exactly right. I mean, there's a story in the you know the New Testament. I've said before many times, the New Testament is a metaphor. It's a symbolic story. And once you understand how the New, the New Testament was taken from the ancient world and rearranged into a religion today. But if you can get past all of that and get to the actual metaphysical stories, the metaphors in the uh, New Testament, it's a world of knowledge that's been hidden. But an example is that uh, what we were just talking about, how the people themselves love the darkness, uh, and they can't get enough of it, mm-hmm. and they will always support it. There's a, there's a, a story in the Bible and in the, in the New Testament about Jesus being brought before the people by Pontius Pilate, and uh, and and he says to the the Pontius Pilate says to the to the crowds of the city, 
that once a year, according to your custom, I can release one prisoner uh, to you and, and let one prisoner go. So I have two prisoners here today. We have Jesus, who we call the, you know, the light of the world, and then we have Barabbas. Barabbas is a, a known criminal, a liar, a murderer. We know he's a criminal. So here are the two people. Well, that's a symbolic story. It's a metaphor. And the symbolism of the story is very simple. When you present to the world of mankind two different uh, ideologies, one is, is based on the light and truth and decency and honor, or, uh, or the other one is based on the darkness and evil and criminality, which one would you choose, Jesus or Barabbas? And the Bible says, with one voice, the town said, give us Barabbas, mm. which is symbolically saying, as a, as a metaphor, symbolically saying, when the people of this world are faced with, do you want the real truth or do you want lies? They will always support the lie. Mm. Give us Barabbas. We don't want the truth in the light. We don't want to hear anything about truth. We didn't come down here to hear truth. So give us the lie. Give us the people who are telling us lies. That's what a democracy is. I mean, a democracy is the rule of the people, and yeah. the people have, you know, the people love the lie. The majority they rules, and it. Uh, it doesn't matter how insane the majority is either. It's, it oh, just no, keeps on talking, not at all. You know? yeah. No, keeps on going, and we know the decadency of the, of the Roman system and how today... All you have to do is look around America today and look at the decadent, uh, incredible darkness that has, has engulfed this great country so that there's ignorance, ill-informed, stupidity, violence, drug addiction, gang wars, prisons. This is a hellhole, and yet the church is doing real fine. The church is just doing fine. Mm. But the people who go to those churches talk to them intellectually sit down and talk to Christians today in America, and you will find they don't know what they're doing. They haven't got the faintest idea in the world what the words mean, what the concepts mean, where anything came from, the etymology of the concepts and the ideas and the words that are used in religion. They haven't got the faintest idea in the world and couldn't care less because it has nothing to do with football or basketball or, or Paris Hilton or anything else of any importance. So I'm just saying, if you, you know, it's just an amazing situation we have. Well, it is, and, and also the, the, the chaos that you're describing here is also something that, at the end of it, church, uh, serves the, the church, and, and especially the government as well, because, of course, they, now they can implement further uh, control, you know, to, to, to try to bring stability to the streets, blah, blah, blah. But again, for, from the church point of view, this is... To them, this is like uh, fuel for the fire. This is evidence that the Antichrist or Satan is out there on the streets, and that's why you need to turn yeah. back to the church, right? Yeah, and, and it works out so much. You know, when you start talking to the politicians and these guys who make the policy and know how this stuff is put together, you know, and you begin to see this is really dark stuff. <laughs> and that's why I said the people in this country especially, but all over, because I, I spent a lot of time in Europe also, and in the Middle East, and uh, but... Uh, as I love the European people, and but I notice, like America, they don't know what they're doing. They haven't no, got the faintest idea of what's no, going on. No. Nobody, nobody questions anything, and uh, if you do, you uh, know. It, I think it's worse actually in in, in Europe. I, I I hear a lot more, you know, uh, at least you know, vocal people in from from the states that are questioning their government and so forth as well, but. Uh, people are criticizing the European Union. Very few, very few voices, unfortunately, from from Europe. Well, you're right. You're right, and uh, and I think it's more. I think it's kind of like an inbred in the European to be afraid of government because yeah, they have yeah. been so mistreated by the church, and so it's just a, a a feeling that the peoples of Europe have that there's been so much horrible oppression that yeah. they don't want to. Uh, put themselves out there on the, on the front lines. Physical torture in, in most cases. Yeah. And those few who had the guts to stand up against this and say no, th those people were strapped up on, on, on poles, you know, and tortured. Oh, and, God, and, yes. And, and in many regards as well, uh, th do you think now then that this is kind of ingrained into the... Uh, 
I don't know, the genetic memory almost of, of the people? Uh, oh, absolutely. No doubt about it. We, we, scientifically, and scientifically, we, we, we know that's true.